Let me ask you something. Have you ever taken a photo with your iPhone and for some reason it just didn't work out as you wish it did? Maybe you had a vision in your mind for what a photo should look like, or maybe you could just see the photo right in front of your eyes, but then you picked up your iPhone, took a picture, and for some reason it just didn't work out as you wish it did. Well, this happens to almost everyone, and actually it's not your fault because the lens of your iPhone doesn't see the world the same way as your eyes do. Now, does it mean you can't take outstanding photos with your iPhone? Absolutely not. In fact, I have some great news for you. My name is Emil Pokarklis, I'm the founder of iPhone Photography School, and in this free video I'm going to show you seven little known tricks for taking incredible iPhone photos that everyone adores and that you'll be proud to look at years later. Now, I wasn't always the guy teaching thousands of people how to take outstanding photos with the iPhone. I didn't always have 92,000 followers on Instagram, and honestly, not too long ago, I didn't even know much about photography myself. My photos were boring, and I didn't really feel comfortable sharing them with other people. But all of that changed when I discovered these seven iPhone photography tricks that I'm going to reveal in this video. Now the first tip I have for you is to have an interesting subject in your photos. Now some of you may have heard of this before, but this is such an important technique that if you don't have a subject in your photos, nothing else we're going to talk about here is going to make any sense. Now in case you don't know what a subject in photography is, your subject is the part of the composition that the human eye sees first. But right now I'm going to show you a photo, and I want you to look at this photo and see what is the first thing that your eyes notice when you look at this photo. So here's the photo. So if you're like most people, you probably notice the person on the right hand side first. And indeed, this person is the subject of this photo. Now just take a moment and try to imagine this photo without the human subject. Just what the photo would look like if there was no human figure on the right hand side. Well, in this case the photo would still be kind of interesting, because the sky and the lines in the foreground are very powerful here, but this photo wouldn't be nearly as good if there wasn't a human subject on the right hand side. And by the way, this photo, just like all the other photos that you'll see in this video, was shot and edited with iPhone, and in fact this one was done with iPhone 4S, and no, you don't need any fancy equipment to take great photos. Now in this photo we're using a human subject but you don't necessarily need a human subject in all your photos, of course not. But you do need to have a subject that stands out in the photo and that is the first thing that the human eye is going to see when they look at the photo. Now, if you don't know what your subject is, then what are you taking a photo of? And if you don't have an answer to this question, well, maybe you shouldn't be taking that photo. So if you don't know what your subject is, take a moment, think about that, find a good subject and only then take a photo. Now it's okay to have more than one subject in your photos, but you definitely need to have at least one subject. Okay, to show you an example, in this photo we have two very interesting subjects. And one of the subjects is the waterfall in the background, and the other subject is the man in the foreground. And these are the first two things that you see when you look at this photo. And actually in this case I could just take a photo of the waterfall alone, and it would still look good. But here, using a human subject in the foreground helps me add scale to the photo, and it also adds an element of story to the photo. But the point I'm trying to make here is that it's totally okay to have multiple subjects in your photos, but you definitely need to have at least one subject. Now, another thing I want you to realize is that a boring subject is still better than no subject. So let me show you an example. Okay, so in this photo we have only one subject, and that subject is the chair in the middle. And you know there's absolutely nothing special about this chair, but it still makes this image so much stronger. So even if you have a boring subject such as the lone chair on the beach, it's still much better to have a subject in your photos than it is to not have any subjects. So to recap, you should always ask yourself what is the main subject of your photo, and you should find a subject if you don't have one. Don't take photos that don't have any subjects. Okay, and now let's move on to the second trick, and that is to take silhouette photos. Now, silhouette photos always look amazing, and they're super easy to create with your iPhone. And I'm going to show you how you can create these photos in just a moment. But first, let me just show you an example of a silhouette photo. So this is a silhouette photo I took on the streets of Copenhagen. And in silhouette photos like this, your subjects are underexposed, meaning that they're dark and that you can't really see any detail on your subjects. 
And actually there are two reasons why silhouette photos work so well. The first one is that they have high natural contrast and high contrast generally looks better in photos. And the other reason is that they're mysterious and they have a great potential for storytelling. Now here's the funny thing about silhouettes. You don't see any silhouettes in real life. But the camera sensor sees the world so much differently than your eye and the only way to become a great iPhone photographer is to learn these differences and start to see the world through the eyes of a photographer. And learning to recognize opportunities for silhouette photos is a big part of that. Okay, so how do you create silhouette photos? Well, actually it's really simple. You can easily create silhouettes with your iPhone by shooting against the source of light. Now let me show you what I mean by that. So here in this photo, all the light is coming from behind the subject through the small window. And that's why the subject itself is now a silhouette, because the light is only coming from behind the subject. And because of that, we're taking this photo against the source of light. And when you're inside, if all the light in the room comes from a window or through an open door, you can create silhouettes very easily simply by shooting against the source of light. Now you can take great silhouette photos inside, but you can probably do even better if you go outside. And if you go outside to do silhouette photos, sunrise and sunset are the best times for silhouette photography. And that's because near sunrise and sunset the sun is low above the horizon, which makes it very easy to shoot against the source of light. So all you have to do is simply point your iPhone against the setting sun, and that way you're taking photos against the source of light. And of course it helps if you're in a large open space, or perhaps next to a body of water, because you actually need to be able to see the sun when it's low above horizon. If you're in a busy city, surrounded by high buildings, you're not gonna see the sun when it's low above the horizon. That's why it's so good to go to a large open space and do silhouette photography there. Now let me show you an example of a silhouette photo taken during the sunset. Okay, so what you can see here is that I'm actually shooting against the source of light. In fact, the sun is right behind the cyclist on the left. And by the way, when you're shooting sunset photos, it's often a good idea to hide the sun directly behind your main subject, because when you do that, you're not going to get lens flare or any other problems associated with taking photos of the sun. Now, silhouette photos always do well on social media. Actually, the last time I checked, this photo had more than a thousand likes on Instagram, and people absolutely love this kind of photos on social media. So to recap, you can easily create amazing silhouette photos with your iPhone simply by shooting against the source of light. Okay, let's move on to the next tip now. So the third technique I want to talk about is including shadows in your composition. And do you remember how I told you that our eyes see the world differently than the sensor of your iPhone? Well, this is just another example of that, because shadows are extremely prominent in photography, but we don't really pay that much attention to shadows in real life. So let me show you an example. So here in this photo, the shadows are actually far more important than the actual subjects are. And the funny thing is that even strong shadows like this don't really stand out that much in real life, but they're very prominent in photos. So as a photographer, you want to learn to recognize this kind of shadows and make sure you include them in your composition. Don't cut them out, make them an essential part of your photos. And by the way, when you do editing for this kind of shadow photos, if you increase contrast just a little bit, you're going to make these shadows even more prominent. Now in case you don't normally see this kind of shadows, uh, that's because you're taking photos at the wrong time of the day. Because shadows are much longer when the sun is low. So once again, the best time for shadows, just like the best time for silhouettes, is the morning and the evening, when the sun is relatively low above the horizon. And if you take photos really close to the sunset or sunrise, you can do some pretty interesting things with shadows. For example here, uh, I was able to include my own shadow in the composition, and the only reason why I was able to create such a ridiculously long shadow is that I was taking this photo very close to the sunset. And once again, it helps if you're in an open space where you can actually see the sun when it's low above the horizon. Okay, let me show you another trick related to shadows. So here, uh, if you hide the sun behind your main subject, which is exactly what I did here, because the sun is hidden directly behind that big chimney, uh, you're gonna get a strong shadow, and this shadow will lead the eye directly towards your subject. So to sum this up, shadows are extremely prominent in your iPhone photos, but we don't really pay that much attention to shadows in real life. Now, if you want to take great photos with your iPhone, you have to see the world as an iPhone photographer, and recognizing subtle differences in light, such as shadows or silhouettes, is a big part of that. So when you're taking photos, 
Make sure you pay attention to shadows. Don't just cut them out, but make them an important part of your composition. Okay, let's move on and cover the fourth trick that I have for you, and that is to use reflections to enhance your photos. Now, I could go on and on about reflections since I love them so much, but the bottom line is that reflection photos always look amazing. So let me show you some examples. So this is an interesting example where I combine what we learned about silhouettes with a reflection photo. And in order to take this kind of photos, first you need to find a good reflective surface. And once you start paying attention, you'll notice that this kind of reflective surfaces are pretty much everywhere. You know, water is absolutely amazing for reflections. You can also use puddles. You don't need to be next to a big lake or anything. You can also use any wet surfaces, ice, glass surfaces, and even shiny cars and other shiny objects are great for reflection photography. Now, in order to take really good reflection photos, you want to get really close to the reflective surface. And let me show you an example of why that is so important. So here we have a reflection of three people admiring the beautiful view. And this is actually an example of where I chose to take a picture of the people looking at the view as opposed to the view itself, because uh, the people were more interesting than the view they were looking at. And here the reflection wouldn't even be visible if you were looking at this scene from the height of a standing person. And the funny thing is that you can only see this kind of reflection if you get really low with your iPhone. So to take good reflection photos, you want to get as close to the reflective surface as possible. If you're not close to the surface, you're probably not even going to see these reflections. But the closer you get to the reflective surface, the more your reflection photos are going to stand out. Okay, let me show you just one more example of reflection photography. And this is another slightly more advanced trick, but it's very, very powerful. So if you get really close to the surface of water, like I've done in this case, you can make even tiny waves look big. And these waves can add interesting distortions to the reflection. So if you look at the reflection here, you'll see that I have some waves in this puddle, which really make this reflection more interesting. Now, what do you do? There are no waves. Well, it turns out you can create this kind of waves yourself, simply if you splash your hands or your feet against water, which is exactly what I did here. And actually what you're looking at now is not a big body of water. This is a tiny puddle next to the sea. And because I'm so close to the surface, this puddle looks so much bigger. And because I was splashing my hands against water, I was able to create this kind of waves in the puddle where there would be no waves otherwise. Now, as I said before, this is only going to work if you're really close to the surface of water. Uh, if your iPhone is higher up, uh, you're not gonna see this kind of reflections and you won't be able to create interesting distortions like this uh, using waves. Okay, so when you're taking photos, always pay attention to reflections. You might not be seeing that many reflections right now, but once you start paying attention, you'll notice that there are great reflections all around you. You just have to learn to recognize them. Okay, let's move on to the next trick, and this one is really, really important, and that is to take photos from a unique angle. And this trick alone can make a huge, huge difference in your photos. And the easiest way to take photos from a unique angle is to simply take them from a low angle. And let me just show you what I mean with an example. Okay, so the photo you're looking at now was taken with the iPhone just a couple of inches above the ground. And because I chose such a low angle, I was able to show the familiar subjects such as people and bike on the left from an unfamiliar angle. Now, you never really look at people from this height, do you? And because you don't look at them from this height, uh, just changing the perspective like this makes this photo more unique and more interesting. Now, in general, in photography, you should try to show the world to people like they've never seen it before. If you can do that, your photos are always going to stand out and they're going to make a big impact on the viewer. So let me just show you one more example of how you can do this simply by adjusting the angle you take photos from. So you've probably seen thousands of stairs in your life and you've seen a lot of people walking up the stairs. But how often do you look at stairs from this angle? Well, probably not very often. And that's exactly what makes this photo so unique. And by the way, this is also an example of a silhouette photo because all the light here is coming from the top of the scene. And you can see that in this case, I was able to create a more interesting photo by combining several of the techniques we've talked about today. Now, another way to show familiar subjects from an unfamiliar angle is simply by looking up. And believe it or not, people don't look up all that much in their daily lives. And now here's the cool thing about looking up in your photos. 
When you're pointing your iPhone up, you can rotate it however you want. And that's how you can create a building that's falling over, like I was able to create in this case. But the bottom line is this. You want to capture the world like people have never seen it before. And taking photos from a unique angle is the easiest way to do that. So make sure you use that in your photography. Okay, let's move on to the next trick. And this one is perhaps my favorite of, out of all the techniques that we talked about today. And that is using simplicity in your photos. Now, Steve Jobs used to say that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And this man clearly knew what he was talking about. Now, if you look at any Apple product, such as your iPhone, you'll notice that they're all designed in the simplest way possible. There are no distractions whatsoever. And that's what makes the design of Apple products so great. Now, it turns out that you can also use the same kind of reasoning to greatly improve your iPhone photos. And let me show you how that's done. Okay, so what you're looking at now is a very simple photo and also a very powerful one. And people often like to overcomplicate their photography, but really they shouldn't be doing that. Because one carefully placed subject is all you need to create a great photo. Just don't try to overcomplicate things. Keep it simple and your photos are going to become more powerful. Now when you're taking photos, you want to eliminate distractions as much as possible. And in this context, a distraction is just anything that doesn't make your photo better. So if there's anything inside the frame that doesn't improve the photo, you should do whatever you can to eliminate that object. So let me show you an example of that. Okay, so this is a photo of the Brooklyn Bridge that I took with my iPhone. And I think it's fair to say that there's not a single distraction in this photo. Now, it looks very clear and very nice, but what you may not realize is that there were actually hundreds of people on the bridge at this time, and it really wasn't that easy to take a photo without any of these people. But I knew this photo would look so much better with no distractions, which is why I worked so hard to make this photo more simple and more clear by eliminating all sorts of distractions that there were on the bridge. Now, it might not always be possible to create perfectly clean photos like this, but when possible, you should try to eliminate distractions as much as you can. It really makes a big difference. Now, another thing you might not realize is that simple photos do better on social media. So if you want other people to like your photos, you have to keep them simple. And there are actually two reasons for that. The first one is the size of the screen, because most people look at your social media photos from their iPhone, and the screen of the iPhone is relatively small, and if your photo is extremely complicated, and if it has a lot of distractions, people are just not going to understand your photo, because they're looking at such a small version of it. So if you can keep your photos simple and clean, they're going to do better on social networks such as Instagram. And now the second reason why simple photos do so much better on social media is the attention span of people. Now, if you share your photos on social media, the chances are that people are only going to spend less than a second looking at that photo. Within this one second, they're going to decide whether they like this photo or not. And if the photo is complicated or if they don't get it, they're just not going to like that photo and they're going to move on. So if you want your photos to make an impact on social media, they have to be simple. Now, if you look at my Instagram account, which you can find at iPhone PS, you're going to see that most of my photos are fairly simple, they're clean of any distractions, and that is definitely not an accident. So do whatever you can to keep your photos simple, don't try to overcomplicate things, and make sure you eliminate any distractions from the frame. Okay, let's move on to the last tip I have for you today, and that is to combine all of these techniques. You don't have to use any of these techniques in isolation. In fact, you'll do much better if you can combine these techniques. And of course, it might not always be possible to use all of them, but if you can use more than one of these tricks at the same time, your photos are going to turn out really good. So let me show you just one example of that. So this is actually one of my favorite photos. And this was shot with iPhone 4S, which by the way is not a new phone. Now, if you look at this exact same view in real life, there's actually nothing special about it. You know, it's a regular sunset and there are sunsets every night. And in real life, of course, you don't see the silhouette because human eyes just don't see any silhouettes. And also you don't see the reflection because this kind of reflection is not visible unless you're close to the reflective surface. And of course, you don't see how the waves are making a distortion in the reflection because this is something you can only see if you're extremely close to the reflective surface. And with your eyes, you would never see this kind of thing. 
So the bottom line is that I could only take this photo by combining the tricks that we talked about today. So to recap, here we have a strong main subject. This is a silhouette photo shot against the source of light. This is obviously a reflection photo taken from a low angle and it uses simplicity. So this photo really uses five out of the six principles we talked about and because of that it is so powerful. Now without these techniques you would never be able to take this kind of photo because your eyes don't see the world this way. The truth is that you won't even see the best photo opportunities in your life unless you learn to see the world through the eyes of a photographer. And people sometimes tell me they have nothing to take photos of but that is just never the case, because there are great photo opportunities all around you, but you can only see them if you look at the world through the eyes of a photographer. And learning the tricks we talked about today is a great first step to achieving that goal and taking incredible photos with your iPhone. I hope you enjoyed the 7 tricks we talked about in this video. I definitely enjoyed sharing these tricks, and if you apply them, your iPhone photos will never look the same again. With that said, this is just the beginning. There's only so much I could share with you in this short video, and while I didn't hold anything back, there's so many other techniques that I didn't have time to share with you today. And there's something even more important than any of the individual tricks we talked about. You see, the techniques we covered today are extremely powerful, but the only way to really take your iPhone photos to the next level is by changing the way you look at the world around you. Some people say they have nothing to take photos of where they live, or that the iPhone can't take great photos, but none of that is actually true. There are great photo opportunities everywhere you go. You just have to know how to use them. And that's exactly why I created iPhone Photo Academy, which is the only online course that will help you take incredible iPhone photos that everyone adores and that you'll be proud to look at years later. Now, I have to warn you that iPhone Photo Academy always sells out quickly, and the registration will only stay open for a few more days. So if you want to find out more about this course, you should do it now while the registration is still open. So click on that big yellow funny looking button below this video, and it will take you to the next page where you can learn more about iPhone Photo Academy and see if this course is a good fit for you before the registration closes in just a few days. So click on the button below and I'll see you on the next page.